Hey, this is Troy Stavros with Gables and Gates Realtors. I'm going to be doing a training on AuthentiSign for our agents in the office and just thought I would throw this out there. Thought it might be helpful for some of you, especially now that AuthentiSign is being offered for free. Um, so what I would typically do is I always keep a link to Transaction Desk on my browser that I can go to. So I would click on that to go to Transaction Desk. Uh, it saves my information. If it doesn't, you would just put your, your first and last name and then your nerds number in here and then log in. Uh, after you log in, it's going to show you uh, your, your dashboard. Um, so you can choose whether you want to start with an individual form, if you want to work with the transaction. Uh, I personally, you know, keep all of my uh, individual deals within a transaction, so it keeps everything put together. So I'm just going to go for the sake of time to an existing transaction. Uh, we'll pick, uh, pick this transaction here. Let's, uh, let's go in and... So this has all of all of the documents in that transaction already, but say let's say we want to add a new one uh, just to show you how AuthentiSign works. We'll go here, go to Add New Forms, click on there. Uh, then we go to Individual Forms, open that up, 2015 Residential Forms, and then we'll just pick one from here. Let's just say Agreement to Show Property. We'll select that to add that to our transaction. Uh, then we'll go in here, open up that particular form, and then, okay, see, this is it's filling out for us, but say, all right, uh, we go through, we fill out the rest of it. All right, then we would go, we would save this to the transaction. Now it would be a saved form. Uh, exit out of there. If we go back to our transaction, you can see that it's showing up down there. So then what I would typically do is go up here to AuthentiSign, click on that, it would take me into the AuthentiSign portion of it. I would click on New, do a new AuthentiSign, and then instead of creating new, what I want to do is go down here because I know that that form is within a transaction already, so I'm going to click on Create Using a Transaction, and then it's going to give me a drop-down box here showing all the different transactions that I have, and I know that it was this particular property that I had that form in that I wanted signed, so I'm going to click on that and then click Continue. Okay, then it's going to give me an option to name the signing. So uh, I'm just going to put to address and then agreement to show. And that's how it's going to show up. Now here, with signing in line or simul sign, what this means is if you sign in line, then it's going to make the people sign in the order that you pr you put them in under participants. Um, so if you absolutely want them to sign in order say the husband first, the wife second, or if you're sending it to multiple parties with the sellers and the buyers first, and you know that the sellers need to sign before the buyers, you can do that. But if you're just sending it to your particular client, who's the only one that's going to be signing it, then I usually do simul sign because that allows them to, to sign whoever gets it. Uh, the thing about this is if you send it to someone and they're waiting to sign on it, the, and there's two people that need to sign, the second person won't get the email until the first person is signed. So I always like to put, do simul sign when it's going to a client where both parties, two buyers in a transaction need to sign. Um, and then down in advanced options, if you want to do that, you can set an expiration date and put reminders in there. Uh, then when you go down here to participants, you're going to click on who you want to send this to uh, for signatures. You can, if you put their information in the transaction, they'll show up there. Uh, to add a new participant, you just click on here and then you can enter their name and their email address. Those are the only two required forms. Um, or if you have them in contacts, you can uh, click on here. So if, for example, I say add from contacts. I've got contacts here. I've got myself in here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And uh, let's see. Uh, role of the transaction. I'm just going to put, uh, you know, selling agent and then add that. Okay, so now I am the only, only one in here right now that is added to this AuthentiSign. You could add multiple parties. Um, then after you add your parties that you want to sign, you're going to go down here to documents and you're going to choose the documents that you want. Well, you have an option uh, whether you put them in to choose from a file in Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Drive, 
or if you want to set a select from the doc box, which is the place in Transaction Desk that you can keep multiple documents stored in the cloud. Um, if you want to open up select forms that uh, are uh, in uh, that have the ability to be stored in here, you know, fresh forms. But what I'm going to do is I know that this form is in this transaction, so I'm going to pick this right here, 228 Multisroll Road Forms and Documents, and it's going to show me all the forms that I currently have in that transaction, and I get to pick what I want. So it's at this point where if you had multiple documents, if you had a disclaimer notice and a confirmation of agency status, and you had all the separate forms in here, you could go ahead and choose all those, you know, to go in and have those signed. And it would give you the ability to send them all as one document and have them sign them. Well, in this case, we're just going to have them sign the one document, which was the, um, let's see, let's find it in here, where, let's see. It is the agreement to show property. Here it is right here. That's the one we just created. So we want to sign that one. So we hit the checkbox, and then we're going to go back up here to add right here. So we have it checked. We're going to click add. So now it's added that form to be signed. The next step after you add all the forms that you want to have signatures on is to go down to design. So you're going to click on here and it's going to prepare the document for signatures. All right, it's at this point that you're going to enter in, you know, some documents it'll automatically enter in the, the name uh, of the person and where they need to sign. Other times it won't. You know, so for this particular document, it did not enter in the uh, the information here. This is this is there just because those those were those characters I typed in before. Um, so what I would what I typically do on any authenticating document is I want to make sure that the the person that is signing has read every page just to cover myself. So to do that, I always make sure that they have to initial every page. And the easy way to have them initial every page is to go over here to drag and drop. You click on here, and then here it says Initial Pages. If you click on that, um, it's going to pull up this page and show you, give you the, oper uh, the ability to choose on the signer and then to click on the pages you want them to uh, go ahead and initial. If you have multiple documents, it'll give you all the documents here, and you can choose to have them initial all the pages. And then you can put where you want them to initial that page, where you want the initial to show up. So I usually like to put align it on the right uh, and on the bottom of the document. And then it just shows you what size that will be. So I've got the person here. I've got the document I want them to initial, where I want them the initial to show up. And then I will hit continue. Okay. And then you see that it puts it down here in the bottom right hand corner. So that will be there when they go to sign the document. They'll have to click on that to initial every page. And then to get them to sign the document, you want to go to the signature page, which is right here. And um, let's say I'm the broker here and I want to put this here. So what I'm going to do is the signer is here. So if you have multiple signers, there will be a drop down here to choose from the different people that need to sign the document. Right now, I'm the only signer, so I'm the only name that's up here. I'm going to take this this right here, which is sign here. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to drag it over here. And then that's where I'm going to need to sign. And what will happen, if you want to put a date in here, you can do that. But when you use AuthentiSign, it automatically does a timestamp that shows you the time and date that it was signed. So you don't necessarily have to do that to fill, because it's going to show you when it was signed. But in the event that you want to, you could grab date right here and just drag it over here. Uh, and put it right there so it'll show the date as well. All right, after you've done that and you've got everything the way you want it, then you're going to go over here to Options. You're going to click on that, hit Save Changes. It's going to say that it has been saved correctly. Then it's ready to go. You're going to go up here to this arrow right here. Click on that. It's going to say, have you you successfully created this for a signing? Do you want to send the invitations out? Click Send Invitations, and it will send it to all the contacts that you've included.
and you'll be good to go. Um, I'm not sure how quickly this will come through. It usually comes through fairly fast on my email, but I was just going to show you what it looks like on the other end. So I'm going to go over here to my email. Uh, see, it has already arrived in my, my email, Authentisign Invitation. So this is what it's going to look like when the person receives your email. They're going to go here. I'm going to scroll down. It's going to say click here to sign. They'll click on there. It's going to open up on a new page. Uh, I've already got mine all set up, but if they don't, they don't. They'll just have to go through and fill all this information out uh, and create a password and a login. Once they do that, they'll be set up for the duration of the transaction. Uh, then it's ready to go. They'll put their password in. They'll make sure they check off all of these things, that they agree to use the electronic uh, signature, agree to the terms of service, and then they can come up here and hit confirm and accept. They'll hit that. Then it's going to bring up the document. And then it's going to, big red thing here that says start. You hit start there to start your signing. First thing it makes you sign is the initial on that page. They'd click on that. Then the signature portion, you click on that. And see it enters my signature. And then down here at the bottom, the second part of the initial, you click on that. It's done. Those are the three things they needed to do. Then they would hit complete, complete signing, and it's done. After they do that, both you and the person signing will receive an immediate email that shows everything that they've signed, and then you'll be good to go. Hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me.